For 15 years, scientists have benefited from data from classified U.S. satellites of all kinds of natural events, fireballs, events in the atmosphere. But not anymore. A recent U.S. military policy is now saying observations by government spacecraft of incoming bodies and fireballs are classified secret. They are not to be released. Bottom line, space rocks or anything else in the atmosphere are now classified. What were the Japanese doing in lunar orbit anyway since <laughs> 2007? Why did the Chinese go to lunar orbit? Uh -huh. Why did the Indians go to lunar orbit? Why has Putin said to the Indians, hey, we want to take you and go with Russian cosmonauts to the moon? Why is suddenly everybody interested in the moon after they've not been interested in 40 years since we went and came back and been there done that? It means buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy. Because Kansas is going bye-bye. George, what if there's a war going on upstairs? Suppose we're involved in some kind of interplanetary war. This isn't about sides. This is about confusion. This is about creating enemies when there aren't any. The man, the whole goddamn world's falling apart. Peace reigns, freedom reigns, democracy rules. How are we going to keep the military-industrial complex chugging forward without clear-cut, fucking, pit-faced, scum-sucking evil breathing down our neck? Hmm? Threatening our very shores. Now, my job is to make sure the other side keeps on fighting. Whatever side. I mean, whatever side we're officially not on this year. Several years ago, I ran into a real, honest-to-gosh government insider. He's dead now, but he told me three things. And one was that we had been going to the moon since 1962, uh, that, the, um, the, that the population of Mars was 600 million, and they looked just, just like us. And um, the other thing was that he had worked on a piece of mining equipment that was uh, to go to the moon. He said, John... He said, we built this thing down in Alabama, way out in the nowhere. He said, it was so enormous. He said, when we finished the project, he said, I actually rented a little airplane. He said, I'm a private pilot, and flew around this piece of equipment just to get an idea of how big it was. And I said, geez, that's fantastic. How, do you, how did they get it to the moon? Yeah. He said, I don't know. And that's, you know, the deal in compartmentalization. You get to know a little bit of the program, but you don't get, get to know the whole thing. So he knew a little bit, but he didn't know the whole thing. What an now, incredible... if you ask where the operations are from now and how they keep them so secret, I think it's Antarctica. <laughs> Look at that picture that Clementine... Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. ...took in 1994. Can you imagine that we got a better picture of Aristarchus from a 10-inch telescope than Clementine did with a $100 million satellite? Oh, that's great. I love it. It doesn't make any sense at all, does it? It doesn't. So all this has been going on, you think, right under our noses for 40 years, John? Absolutely. Uh, if uh, anybody wants to uh, check uh, Google search words, I recommend two things. One is moon mining. You're going to be absolutely stunned at how much there is. I think there's a million five hundred thousand hits on moon mining and space law and Clementine. Just Google those things and see how much there is. They don't filter it. They just give it to the scientists. Okay. Here so you go. The scientists will then figure out. Wait a minute. This isn't bowlines, fireballs, asteroids, moths. You know, <laughs> hiccups. Oh my God. These are spaceships. And. They don't want the general scientific community, which had incredible credibility, of course, if it ever came out with this, to have the source data to come to this conclusion. Let's see if it works they, in a ram. We're going to see on months. Friday whether Ahmadinejad's days are numbered in Iran. Wouldn't it be interesting if behind the scenes, the geopolitics that we're not allowed to know are part of this, whatever's going on upstairs, that we know is not using rockets, Give me a break. 
NASA is not that obsolete. <laughs> so then we look at this sudden order to keep scientists from accessing data, which is totally vital to keeping Earth secure, let alone the United States. The whole planet secure because all it takes is one big rock and you've had a very bad hair day. There's something on the moon that everybody now wants. Again, we're not supposed to know. A base that was built by the United States, the Russians, and the British with the help of bankers using technology that was given to this elite, this ruling family by the Greys in 1954. They've been up here a long time, and this is actually considered a resort. This is not Club Med. <coughs> this area here apparently are, is a domed complex inside this crater, and I'm told that the world government picked this area because there's water underneath it. These are domes. These are a series of domes that are lit up from the inside. I want you to focus on this area right here. I want you to focus on this structure in here. For those of you who are architects, <clears throat> please feel free to, you know, say something about this. This area right here, you can see the curves, the angles. There's another bridge here. I want you to notice these lit up objects inside the bottom of the crater. We've got a close-up of it. Next slide, please. Here we go. Okay, here's another bridge. Apparently this is inhabited by extraterrestrials from Orion. These are, I'm told, are domes. Does everybody see this? Okay. I'm also told that this is a road that goes into here. There's an elevator that goes up to this area here. And when they land, they take an elevator or something down, and then they, they can walk, because there's atmosphere on the far side of the moon. Which is why the astronauts took pictures of clouds. <coughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, the snow job that we've been given. It's nothing what we've been told it is. Nothing. Right. Okay. Look at this. Just sitting there parked. This was taken by the Lunar Orbiter in 1966. Next slide. This is seven miles high, and it's a monument to one of the old ETs. Next slide. Here's a close-up of it. What's that, what is it? Your suspicions are pretty accurate. Back up just one more time. Okay. Now let's look. Now look. Now just you know, look at the rest of the terrain here. Okay. Look at the rest of the terrain and just look at how this sticks out. Seven miles. How come our astronauts missed it? <laughs> I mean, I hate to be redundant, but I'm just hoping somebody will have the answer. There are thirty-five thousand full-time human beings from Earth living on the moon. And they are Aryans by birth. Now let me just say that one more time. They are Aryans by birth. <coughs> they are Aryans by birth. You're going to have to research one because if I come right out and say it, I'll get deep trouble. This is why the focus is on destroying the United States of America. Okay, the UN, the World Order, all of that stuff, they're all taking orders from ETs, and they're scared to death. But they're willing to sacrifice this nation. They're willing to kill three and a half to four billion people to maintain their place as the new priesthoods. This is Sumeria, this is Egypt all over again, but on a much grander scale. Because now you've got six billion people living here.